the strategy and the sources what should be the strategy for cost accounting what should be the sources then we will do the previous question analysis and we will also discuss the answer writing both for the theory portion and also the numerical portion how to write the answer for the numerical portion and how to write the answer for the theory portion right so in this workshop we will discuss uh, syllabus also right we will see the previous question pattern sources and how to solve the questions so uh, how many of you are attending the workshop my workshop first time my commerce workshop you are attending first time how many of you many of you are already know you are already attending my programs or you are part of the programs but some of you are attending first time okay parimala first time very good welcome harsh kapoor first time prabhash tripathi first time okay so for those people who are first time uh, let me share my profile you should also know who is the person you are attending the session with so my name is uh, c a rahul kumar i am a chartered accountant uh, 2009 batch okay so i am a fellow chartered accountant in fact and i got all india rank 29 so i have been a very good student in uh, ca program qualified all the ca attempts first attempt then i am also the director academic director at dadami ies in delhi and uh, i appeared three times in the upsc interview i qualified the commerce and accountancy i qualified the mains to commerce and accountancy optional three times in upsc right and i wrote mains five times and I scored very good marks also and at one time i also scored less marks so i know uh, what mistake did i make when i scored less marks and what uh, improvement i did when i got more than 300 marks so how to how to you know increase the marks that i know okay so i will be guiding you i have a teaching experience of 7 years active teaching experience and before that also almost 10 years plus i have been in the teaching field uh, recently icai conducted a civil services orientation program so i designed the program help them conduct the civil services orientation program for the ca students and uh, here i am with you for the commerce and accountancy optional right so first before venturing into the cost accounting we will see the paper 1 previous year question pattern so paper 1 it is of 250 marks right and you have to attempt 250 marks basically right out of 400 400 marks so basically there are total 8 questions out of 8 questions you have to attempt five questions right and uh, this five questions you have to select one each from uh, section a and section b compulsory and then you have to choose a minimum one a maximum two from both the sections which are the optional right so that is a pattern of upsc which you, uh, i am supposing that you already know now out of the paper one we have multiple subject and out of which if you see this is a classification of various subject so in this classification which is a classification of recent 3 uh, years we can see the topmost the topmost is the financial management so the financial management we have already discussed so some of you who are attending my session first time you can request us we will also share with you the financial management strategy okay so financial management we have already shared and today we are discussing the costing accounting so in the cost accounting please see this point the second line okay so here one thing is very clear that in if you see 2021 right 35 questions 35 marks numerical 25 marks theory so numerical is more than theory here theory is more than numerical and here theory is more than numerical so basically they are asking both theory and numerical and you have to equally focus on the theory one mistake that we do especially if you are from the ca background that you are focusing mostly on the numerical part the theory part is relatively ignored taken to be granted that should not happen because in the theory you have equal chance of getting very good marks and normally we take the theory to be granted we th we think oh we already know about this concept we will write in the exam 
but that is not the right approach you have to my you have to uh, you know uh, remember exact point remember exact formula remember exact uh, uh, terminology from the theory part so that should happen you should actually uh, do the revision multiple time and try to remember the micro point of the uh, particular topic right so theory is something which is underestimated and here you can see it is actually coming more than the numerical part okay so costing and uh, in fact the theory part is relatively easy because you don't have to do much practice right and uh, uh, you have to remember by the systematic method right so costing occupies the second highest importance in the paper 1 after the financial management right so financial management and costing these are two top most subject and we should make a hold over the both subjects now cost accounting syllabus if you see there are total uh, eight points okay so the first two concepts are mostly they are asking mostly theory questions in the last one also mostly theory questions they are asking right so the first is the basic one the nature and the functions so you have to understand the meaning nature functions assumptions and uh, how to install the cost accounting system the second is cost concepts about income measurement profit planning then cost control and decision making so cost control cost reduction so these are the theory chapters mostly they are asking the theory questions the numerical questions are not there similarly uh, if you come to 3 4 5 and 6 okay here they are asking mostly numerical in addition to theory theory to puchhenge hi but numerical they are asking from these areas which include uh, maybe job costing process costing activity based costing or uh, cvp analysis okay and uh, maybe uh, pricing decisions right uh, make or buy shut down decision then uh, uh, this budgeting is numerical part sorry theory part okay and standard costing in the standard costing they are asking both uh, numerical also and theory also right so there is a particular pattern in few chapters they are asking only theory because there is no numerical possible and in other chapters wherever there are numerical possible they are asking the numerical questions also right now now let us see the important chapters based upon the previous questions so this is the analysis of uh, theory questions since 2013 okay so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 years we have the 9 years of total marks and if you see out of the total chapters the activity based costing they have asked uh, maximum marks okay then uh, if we combine uh, the chapter number maybe this uh, initial three chapters they also get good weightage 75 marks almost okay and uh, similarly uh, if we combine this uh, responsibility and the budgetary control then also almost 65 marks okay cost control cost reduction 20 marks so on and off they are asking the questions in the cost control cost reduction and uh, in the marginal costing although they ask mostly the numerical part but here they are also asking the theory 25 marks and 15 marks right similarly in the process costing they are also asking the theory even if though they are also asking the numerical right standard costing they are also asking the theory one thing which i have to make it very clear to you people is that you have to go through the theory of every chapter because in this entire analysis one thing you can see that every chapter is covered they will ask one compulsory question every year of 10 marks this is compulsory okay and uh, they will ask one or two questions in other questions right so mostly they will ask the question in such a manner that if you don't know that question that you might have to ignore the entire question or you have to miss the particular option okay let me show you how it works basically in paper 1 suppose we have question number 1 okay this is compulsory so in the compulsory you don't have any choice a b c d e out of this 
they, they will ask, suppose, uh, question 1D. This is compulsory. You don't have any choice. If you know, then you will attempt. If you don't know, then you will miss out. Right? This is first part. Now, second part, suppose question number 2, 3, and 4. Right? This is section A of paper 1. Right? Now, in question number 2, suppose there are 3 sub-questions, 2 A, B, C, and here also A, B, C, here also A, B, C, okay? So they might ask a question of theory, of costing, of 15 marks here, okay? And suppose this is accounts, this is taxation, right? Now suppose you don't know, like suppose uh, you know this question very well, you know this question very well, you know A and you know C very well, but you are not aware about the option B. So in that case, you might have to ignore this particular question. Okay, now suppose what happens that uh, there is question number three, in this question also they are giving, say, one uh, theory of costing of 20 marks. Now suppose you also don't know this, then you might have to ignore the question number three. So if you don't know the single question, then you might have to forego, you don't, might have to ignore a particular full question, which will be very, very difficult for you to manage. Okay? You should not do this, because otherwise it will be very difficult for you to complete the paper of 250 marks. You might have to ignore the entire question, or you might have to ignore the particular option. Are you with me, everyone? Are you getting? So the combination of questions which is given by UPSC is in such a manner that if you if you are not covering the full syllabus then you might have to lose you might have to attempt less number of questions in the final examination on the final day okay so you should not take any chance the full coverage of the syllabus is very important and this this analysis which I am showing you this analysis clearly shows that every chapter Every chapter has some of the other marks in last nine years, okay? So you never know which theory they will ask. So you have to remember, you have to, you know, practice, you have to uh, make the short notes, you have to write the answer of the theory portion without any carelessness, okay? So costing means theory, that is something which you should also understand, right? After this, let us see the numerical part. Now in the numerical part, the good thing is that there are certain chapters which are highlighted more than others. So in the numerical part, you can prioritize. You are not supposed to uh, practice, you know, so many questions of every chapter. For example, standard costing. So far, only two times they're asking the question in the last nine years. So you should not like practicing every question of co uh, standard costing, you know, try to uh, remember every formula or you know that much of proficiency might not be required in the standard costing but there are particular chapters especially if we see marginal costing the marginal costing portion is carrying highest weightage so this is something which you should practice every concept every area so marginal costing is the most important chapter and I will say start your practice with the marginal costing only you should go in the prioritized manner because the questions of the marginal costing will definitely come, definitely come. You can see almost every year they're asking the question, 20 marks, 15 marks, 15 marks, except two years. Then again, 15 years, 15 marks, 20 marks. So marginal costing question is definitely coming. Do that, practice that. Remember the formula. That is something which you should do, right? Uh, then if you see other category B topics, okay, this is category A, I will say. In the category B, we can have the questions of process costing. Process costing is also something which is, uh, they are, they're asking, or standard costing, okay. And in category C, you can put activity-based costing, or maybe, uh, you know, job costing, okay. These are the questions that you can see in the last nine years, okay. So marginal costing is something which you should do very, very good. And then after that process costing, and standard costing and then after from every chapter just try to remember the formula try to remember the job sheet or maybe uh, what is the format spiceman of 
uh, say activity list costing because they will not ask the question every year on and off they will ask the question so if you practice only one question or two question that is sufficient so you have to go in the prioritized manner not in a blind manner right now so uh, one thing is also there that you should be clear with all the concept all the basic concept should be clear in your mind for example cost what is the meaning of cost costing cost accounting cost accountancy management accounting and cost management these are very very micro questions which which uh, you should know the clear uh, you, you should know clearly because if you have the clarity that clarity will be reflected in your answers maybe sometime you will be using this definition in the introduction part sometime they will ask the difference between two terms so this clarity you should have like what is cost it is the expenditure incurred or attributable on a particular product or article or activity what is costing it is a technique and the process of identifying the cost ascertaining the cost what is cost accounting it is a process of accounting so here the focus is on accounting in the costing the focus is on technique and the process right and uh, cost is basically the expense how much is the expense which is incurred because of a particular activity because of a particular product or because of a particular article right cost accountancy it is a application of costing and cost accounting so application of costing and cost accounting principles methods and technique this is the cost accountancy this is a discipline this is more of a you know discipline study part right then cost management cost management is basically application of management accounting concept methods of collection analysis and presentation of data so this micro analysis you should know what is the difference between each term now we will go and do the chapter wise analysis we will do we will uh, look into what are the theory portion they are asking and what are the numerical portion they are asking what kind of question they are asking and what should be the coverage that you should have right are you with me everyone any question so far Anjali is asking economy is my weak point okay so Anjali for economy i take a separate workshop okay you can be in touch with our team for that because here we are focusing on the commerce and accountancy optional okay very good eshwarya vishwajit harsh okay now we will go with the chapter wise trend analysis right so the first chapter that is the nature and the functions of cost accounting and the installation of the cost accounting system so in this chapter the theory question they are asking is mostly about the functions of the cost accounting like they have asked this in 2008 and 2018 both they are repeating the question then they can also ask about cost accounting process or necessity of having cost records or the cost sheet in the cost sheet you should know the functional classification of cost heads of cost in the cost sheet then format of the cost sheet and the advantages of advantages of the cost sheet right so these are the some areas i i see i'm not covering the whole micro list of topic here i am just giving you a you know broad areas topic which are repeated which you you must never ignore because these question they will repeat anyhow right 2021 from this chapter they asked a question explain the principles and the steps in setting up a good costing system in a manufacturing organization right so this kind of application based questions they can ask so they will not ask direct questions sometime they will ask okay how we can set up a cost accounting system in the manufacturing organization so they are asking a particular dimension here right then 
numerical part in the numerical part they are asking the cost sheet so you should have a complete clarity about the format of the cost sheet you should clearly know the every term of the cost sheet you should clearly know what is the difference between multiple concept or uh, what is a, a prime cost right what is the works of factory cost what is the cost of production what is the cost of goods sold and then finally cost of sales so this full format this full format you should remember you should practice you should make because from this portion they can also ask the theory part they can ask you to make the spiceman of the cost sheet or if you if they ask the numerical part then definitely you have to give the answer in this particular format only okay so in the costing the formats are very very useful if you have the format with you it works very well it gives you a lot of benefit so try to practice try to uh, make formats in your own handwriting okay try to make it in your hand on handwriting okay the benefit of doing this in your handwriting is that you actually remember in the process of doing the work jaise jaise aap karenge isko us process mein aapko yaad rahega theek hai then next is cost concepts about income measurement profit planning cost control and the decision making so from here they are asking the question very favorite question this particular question segregation of fixed cost and uh, from the semi variable cost they have asked this question so many times at least 5 to 6 time they are asking this question in last years in previous years so this is something which you should do very very good okay so this is something which you should do very very good manner similarly they can ask the question on sunk cost versus opportunity cost this question they asked in 2021 also okay so this question they asked earlier also and now also repetition the good thing about the technical option is the repetition okay so again i will discuss a very small thing like uh, many question many people they have the question about choosing the optional sir is it good choice to choose the optional of commerce and accountancy should we take the commerce and accountancy as an optional my answer is definitely yes why because if you go to the humanities the questions might be repeated but in answers there is lot of scope of creativity they have lot of uh, updations required required current affairs case studies on so many things and in humanities we have you know so many people appearing in the exam so you never know who is your competition the final answer it can vary from person to person and there is lot of subjectivity most importantly please understand this point very carefully in the humanities the examiner the examiner has subjectivity that if they like your answer then you will get good marks and suppose your answer is good as per you but that examiner do not like your idea suppose there is a question on secularism now in the secularism you might have some idea but your examiner do not like that idea so you have the you have your result in the hand of the examiner there is lot of subjectivity discretionary power but in case of commerce and accountancy the good thing is that you have well defined answer yes i understand that the syllabus is bit lengthier but the good thing is that if you cover that syllabus then you get good marks you have a complete clarity okay i have to study these many chapters these many questions i will study theory from this portion numerical from this portion numerical marginal costing se aayega theory first two chapter se aayega to aap usko plan kijiye usko cover kijiye aapke samne sirf ek hi challenge hai you have only one challenge coverage 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 covering repeating doing answer writing 
you don't have the challenge of making it creative there is no challenge of much subjectivity because the answer will remain same whether you are studying from ICI or BCom or BBA you can't do much differentiation the only skill that you need is the skill of remembering understanding applying and reproducing so one thing you should you should always keep in mind in the commerce and accountancy optional is that give the sufficient time adequate time for preparation the mistakes will which people do they focus more on gs and because of this they are not able to cover the full syllabus of the commerce in a systematic manner in a timely manner in the qualitative manner so this is something which you should know that sufficient time is required for the commerce and accountancy optional if you ask me it requires complete 6 month okay if you are a fresher then give 6 hours daily and if you are already prepared once or took the coaching or something then 3 hours this much is required 6 month daily 6 hour or daily 3 hour and the complete optional will be in your hand you will be confident about optional but the mistake which people do that they they plan for 6 month but they are not able to focus they are not able to maintain the consistency there is lot of inconsistency and because of inconsistency what happens that they end up wasting 3 month out of 6 month and they are not able to cover the full syllabus or even if they cover the full syllabus but the problem is lack of adequate numerical practice or they remember the theory but in the theory they remember only 2 3 point rather where you should remember 5 to 6 points exact point you remember only 2 to 3 point see the if you give less time then you have to face the consequences because there is a lot of difference if you get average marks above average marks and excellent marks this excellent marks will give you the rank this average marks no surety of you clearing the mains okay and above the average marks it can give you the interview call will help you get the interview call but a lot depends upon other things also the mistake that we do is that we keep focusing upon gs rather than optional definitely proportionately the component of gs is having more weightage but the input output ratio input to output ratio in the gs is comparatively less there is a saturation in marks in gs you have to work a lot to get very excellent marks compared to optional in optional if you give time then you can get very very good marks but in gs even if you give time but still there is no surety that you will get good marks because there is lot of subjectivity which sources you are following the way you are covering the way you are doing the answer writing the content is very very fluctuating content is very very changing dynamic content compared to the commerce and accountancy optional so i always say please give sufficient time adequate time for the commerce and accountancy optional go slow don't be in hurry don't try to complete subject in 2 days 3 days 5 days that way you can complete the subject you can complete the subject but then you can't get good marks people are running behind completing the syllabus completing the syllabus is not the real game rather completing the syllabus with the proper quality that is something required are you with me everyone this thing you can realize after you give at least one mains i have given five time mains with the commerce and accountancy optional and i know that i got approximately 230 marks when i was not well prepared and i got 300 plus marks when i was very well prepared so that difference is very very clear in your marks 
completing the syllabus should not be the criteria but completing the syllabus with proper practice with remembering each and every point that is the that is something which should be your target because we are in the competitive exam we are not in the professional exam where you get only 50% marks and you get the selection you get the degree no that is no that is this is not something which we are doing here here you have to get top marks in your optional because nowadays if you see in the mains and interview what are the components which are deciding the rank one thing is that yes interviews lot of uh, it, it it carries lot of uh, uh, subjectivity also and yet it carries good of it has lot of potential of giving you good rank but in interview because there is subjectivity we can't depend much okay in mains if you see gs 1 2 3 4 and 4 the syllabus is almost saturated content is saturated now and you can't get very excellent marks in all the papers yes there is a paper of sc which has a scope of high input output ratio and your optional which have the scope of high input output ratio so in sc and optional you should focus more than the other papers in other paper your target should be to get the average marks at least average marks that you should get some minimum average marks and sa optional get excellent marks are you getting this is something which you should know if you want to clear the mains examination and you are studying the commerce and accountancy for clearing the mains examination not for the sake of doing something else because you will not get any other benefit after you do the commerce and accountancy optional the only benefit that you can get is clearing the mains and for clearing the mains you have to get the excellent marks are you with me everyone okay there are many questions i will answer the questions later okay eshwarya the solution of pyq we are coming up very soon okay it will take maybe couple of months but we are working on that so there you can find now the next area is methods of costing job costing activity based costing right so here the job costing uh, sorry this activity based costing is very important in the activity based costing you should know the concept of activity based costing the usefulness the cost hierarchy and the steps of the activity based costing right yes yes mr uh, or miss amiable we are doing that right then uh, traditional absorption costing versus abc you should know the differences right this differences you should know very very clearly right so my point is abc costing the theory part also you should be very very strong and in the numerical part in the numerical part also you should be good right even though they will not ask many question but if they ask a question you should not miss that and it is a very simple topic so it will it will not even take much time this is a job costing job job cost sheet so this format you should make yourself by your hand you should practice some questions from here right so uh, 2017 the question came on abc the numerical question abc costing uh, that you have to calculate the cost per unit of each product a and b based on traditional method of charging where overhead and activity based costing method okay so this type of question they are asking in the 2017 okay so just give me a uh, minute i will be joining Okay fine now process costing 
process costing very important chapter so here you should know the meaning the procedure the treatment of process loss or process gain right valuation of working progress inter process profits operation costing this is not the syllabus okay then normal versus abnormal loss and uh, process costing methods and calculation of equivalent unit in the theory part they will ask mostly about the wastage okay the loss the normal loss abnormal loss and abnormal gain or yield right or they will ask the calculation of equivalent unit how to calculate the equivalent unit in the process costing so in the theory part they asking this question and they are repeating these questions okay multiple times similarly in the numerical <coughs> they will ask you the calculation of work in progress fifa method of valuation of inventory weighted average method of uh, calculation then wastage normal and abnormal the abnormal gain and the survey so this question of 2021 you can see 15 marks question uh, they are asking you to prepare the process accounts and abnormal loss or gain account i will say these kind of questions are something which you should not miss these are simple questions direct questions and you should never miss these type of questions right so this is the statement of equivalent units so this kind of these kind of statements you should make again i am saying in the costing making the format remembering the statement that is something which you should practice and that will help you because in the theory they can ask and the numerical you might need to it use it in the practice questions right then uh, next chapter is most important chapter this is basically the whole uh, range of the marginal costing concepts so all the concepts of the marginal costing this is very very important both for the numerical and the theory part so here you have to cover the meaning the marginal uh, meaning the uh, the process the component the characteristics then cvp analysis which include bp analysis margin of safety angle of incidence contribution ratio and the decision making regarding make or buy shutdown point all these type of questions in the theory part they will ask cost volume P cvp analysis very very important the multiple time they are repeating the meaning assumptions limitations then difference between the marginal costing and the absorption costing bp analysis pv ratio and how to segregate the variable semi variable cost into fixed and the variable component 2004 they asked uh, application based question so these type of question you should also remember the business firms rarely operate at their break even point therefore the break even analysis is very limited used to management comment in brief that means here you have to tell what is the utility of the break even analysis how it can help what is the significance so these are the questions we have you have to tell the you know you have to give the answer in a applied manner by giving some illustration in the numerical format the numerical question from this chapter they are asking on the calculation of marginal costing shutdown decisions make or buy limiting factor cvp break even optimum sale mix and selling price to maintain the particular profit and the uh, impact of mergers okay so this is a question of 2021 in 2021 they asked what is the break even point the number of unit to be sold to get a particular profit desired profit okay so this kind of question they are asking and these are the repeated questions if you know then you can get very good marks right so you should actually know the statement and the under the marginal costing again this kind of format are very very important where you are able to uh, identify the product cost the product cost inventoryable the margin and the period cost and finally the profit or loss this differentiation you should know very very clearly then techniques of cost control and cost reduction this is completely theory part then budgeting as a tool of planning and control in the budgeting and the budgetary control the component like essentials of budget objectives the types of budget zero based budget performance budget 
and uh, then we can divide the budget into capacity wise functions wise period wise and master budget so theory question they are asking about the budgetary control what is the importance and what is the application in the numerical part they are asking two questions about flexible budget and the production budget okay so we can divide the budget into uh, you know capacity wise like fixed budget and flexible budget so they are asking the flexible budget and that too regarding the production budget mostly right so this is something which you should know then standard costing in the standard costing you should know the concept how to set the standards then what is the benefit of uh, variance analysis right so you should know types of standards process of standard setting setting up of standard cost types of standards classification of variances computation of variances and the criticism of standard costing and then difference between the standard cost and the standard costing so this theory part you should know very very clearly in the numerical part they are asking material variance labor variance variable overhead variance and fixed overhead variance so you can see material cost variance you should know the formulas and all then labor cost variance you should know what is rate variance idle time variance efficiency variance then in the efficiency variance also mix variance yield variance right similarly overhead cost variance mostly they are asking these type of question so you should know these kind of formula these are the formulas of the material cost variance like uh, material price variance material usage variance mix variance and yield variance so accordingly you should also know labor and the variable overhead this formula you should know and you should practice at least one or two question from each of these area then comes responsibility accounting and the divisional performance measurement here they are asking about theory questions about uh, responsibility accounting and responsibility centers are you with me everyone so far uh, there are some questions can you please show the slide of process costing numericals mm aishwarya i am sorry i can't go back because i have to complete this uh, and i have to discuss lot of things okay then we have one more question siva p is syllabus for cma inter costing and upsc costing syllabus is same does it require separate preparation or same preparation is enough so siva you have to check your cma i am not aware about your cma definitely so you please check yourself and uh, Uh, yeah if you have prepared it very well if you have already prepared very well the same preparation you can use the one thing you can do is you practice the previous question identify the previous questions which are there and the same book which you have been doing for your uh, 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 for your cma that you can do here also okay so it is not that you have to completely change the source or you have to reread the same thing from different source no that is not something which is required you can definitely cover it from the existing source which you have you which you have been following in your cma okay but the pattern of questions the pattern of questions will be from the upsc the pattern of question you should follow from the upsc okay mr siva One zero eight zero hours for optional. <laughs> yes, it is worth one thousand hours. Definitely, it is worth. I am telling you, it is worth. Previous year questions analysis. So, if we see last two years questions, we can see from three different perspective. The one based upon the level of difficulty, we can divide into easy questions, moderate questions. and difficult questions based upon the new or repetition we can divide into new or pyq repeated theme and third one is the basic or application part so we can divide into is it basic question or applied question so the same question we can learn we can look into from these three dimensions from these three perspectives right so 2020 questions if you see question number 1c it was the compulsory question it was repeated and easy and basic so 
this is something which you should grab in this type of question out of 10 marks you should try to get 7 marks you should write every single point you should write every micro dimension you should make diagram you should write assumption write some numerical example give the answer as comprehensive as possible because here you have the simple basic easy repeated question right these are the low hanging fruits don't miss these fruits because if you see in the upsc gs in gs out of 10 to get 7 marks is a big challenge big big challenge but in optional getting 7th marks is easier the only thing is that you have to revise and reproduce okay then question number 2b this question is new not from the repeated theme and it is moderate yet it is basic so one thing you can see they are asking the basic questions all the questions are basic and most of the questions are repeated out of five questions three are repeated themes and out of five questions three are easy and two are one is moderate one is difficult so repeated theme easy to moderate question and the basic questions they are asking in the 2020 similarly we can see 2021 okay in uh, okay this is the question in 2020 this question they asked from the marginal costing the make or buy should should it be made or bought okay and uh, the decision about in that so these type of question they are asking these are the i will say repeated questions and moderate level of difficulty 2021 question if we see the pattern there the questions are also application oriented and uh, the level of difficulty has increased out of four question only one question is easy only one question is easy otherwise they are moderate or difficult yes the pattern is repeated only mostly the questions are repeated only so repetition moderation and application orientation they are asking in the 2021 okay everyone now let us come to the numerical part how to solve how to differentiate So basically, in your BCom or CA, our focus is upon somehow arriving the answer. कि सर कैसे भी करके ना balance sheet मिल जाए बस कैसे भी करके ना बस decision निकल जाए कि make करना है buy करना है, right? So here the focus is more on solution part. Steps क्या होंगे? Okay. actually doing that okay but in upsc you have to make your answer competitive so you have to add multiple things you have to add the value basically your answer should not be just like any other answer so in your answers you should add multiple things right first of all introduction as much as possible try to write the introduction for example assumptions or maybe meaning 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 of something is something which you can definitely add meaning is the basic way of writing the introduction in the main body you will get the you will give the solution as usual then you should also give the working notes where you should explain the treatment of every point that how every point has been treated in the answer how we are using that point to make the calculation right then you should also give the explanatory note especially for those point which are not included in the numerical part especially for those point which are not included in the numerical part you should give the explanatory note then you should give the analytical conclusion analytical conclusion mein you will give the final decision ki how to uh, should we make it or should we buy it you should give the decision based upon the facts based upon the comparison you should give the evidence behind your decision also right and finally write the assumptions very very clearly whatever like in whichever question the data is insufficient and you don't have uh, complete uh, you know in facts information you should actually write your assumptions very very clearly that i have assumed this this point and accordingly you should give the answer 
So these are the components in the numerical answer writing which you should not miss, right? In the uh, part paper one, basically, the type of the words they are using is meaning, characteristics, objectives, principles, determinants, importance, differences, treatment, uses, and competition. So in every question, in every topic, try to try to incorporate these dimensions. Okay, try to incorporate these dimensions in your answers. Okay. Directive words. So in the directive words, if you see in the cost accounting, okay, and these directive words I have taken from the ICI material. As per the ICI, from the ICI, it says that there can be three type of directive word. One is the directive word which are there for testing the knowledge, which are testing the knowledge. Okay, basically very basic type of uh, words like listing down. state define describe distinguish explain identify illustrate and similar other words okay so here they are asking the the what part okay meaning or they are asking the the points right list or give the details explain the exact meaning give the detailed narration okay or mentioning or highlighting the difference between different things or you know writing the meaning or explaining something with the help of some example and similar things right so they are giving that particular thing the next type of the next type of uh, uh, words they are using is are the application words are the application words so in the application word they will ask you to calculate or compute determine or find demonstrate prepare reconcile solve tabulate a combination of verbs these are mostly in the numerical questions and finally third type of questions are analytical based questions where they are asking you to analyze categorize compare construct discuss or interpret here you have to give the analysis part okay so this is about the directive word okay how to apply this directive word that we discuss in our uh, program now coming to the book list first if you have already some book from your graduation or maybe your professional exam then follow that book with the pre-vq pattern okay make your own handwritten notes of the theory part especially try to solve all the previous questions of the theory and try to all try to solve all the previous questions of the numerical part okay now what is the timeline or schedule that you should have for costing okay so we will suggest you to have 3 weeks out of total 6 month spend 3 weeks maximum on costing right similarly on the financial management spend 4 weeks so like this maximum 3 weeks are sufficient if you are completely beginner 3 weeks 6 hours if you are something someone who has already prepared Three weeks, three hours. You should do this. Okay, three weeks. Me, you will do theory. You will do numerical. Practice numerical. Make short notes of theory. Right. The mistakes which people do. Number one, that they are taking paper one to be granted because paper one is mostly from your graduation, from your CA. So you think, sir, this paper will automatically be done? No, that is not the choice. That is not something you should do, because. the point is in the upsc they are asking 10 subjects on one day which include for example six subjects from the paper 1 cost accounting tax audit fmfi and four subjects from the paper 2 ot ob hrm ir so total 10 subject in one day this becomes a challenge in our graduation or in our ca we do one paper in one day like accounting only costing or only financial management that is comparatively easier but here in addition to your gs you have to prepare 10 subject on single day that is something which is a big problem so second problem which people make is single second mistake which people do is they avoid doing the regular answer writing they are just busy in reading revising but not doing the answer writing this is something which is very very big problem 
and it never gives you the confidence because you are always under confident you are in the race of completing the syllabus and you never complete the syllabus so you never write the test so my suggestion is please write the answers daily avoiding the answer writing will not help you okay and our mentorship program is designed in the same manner in the mentorship program we are giving you daily two questions as per a particular schedule you cover your those component from the sources you read revise and write the answer and get the evaluation and the discussion that gives you the confidence that yes i am covering that gives you the clarity the cons the uh, uh, certainty of your covering of optional right and third not giving adequate time somehow the gs is very big and never ending whether this is your first attempt or last attempt i am telling you you will never feel happy about gs because gs is very very vast so never try to complete the gs in the complete manner that will never be possible so what you should try try to play the optimum game minimum time which is devoted for the uh, commerce you should never compromise never give it to the gs in the gs whatever time you have given fix that time only don't go beyond that so have the pure compartmentalization between the gs and the commerce otherwise the gs will end up taking more and more time and you will never realize that why did you get below average marks despite so 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 much of coverage of the content because again the coverage is not sufficient you have to become the master you have to do the micro analysis of the topic you have to prepare the topic in a very very comprehensive manner right you should do the three phases you should do the answer writing in three phases in the first phase in the 6 month daily two answers out of these two answer one should be from the pyq and one can be the new question or maybe both the questions can be from pyq right two questions six month it will give you a lot of practice because this means that almost 27 weeks and 10 questions in every week almost 270 questions that means almost uh, i will say like every paper has uh, approximately uh 20 questions so you can say more than 12 tests more than 12 full length test you are practicing and it gives you a lot of confidence in the theory also in the numerical also and as i told you that you have to become confident at the micro level that confidence will come from this practice okay unless you do the practice from your hand you will never get the confidence or even if you have the confidence but that confidence is fake confidence your you will not be able to manage the time in the examination and in the examination you will always feel lack of time so that you can do through daily answer writing after this is done then come to the second phase in the second phase write the subject wise test in the subject wise test you will write one hour test or one and half hour test of every subject so this is a revision phase in the revision phase you are actually revising the entire syllabus and then practicing the subject wise test and just before the exam the third phase in this phase you will practice two full mocks of every paper two full mocks of every paper you will practice so this is the three level of answer writing we should do and which is actually required for your conceptual clarity good practice and confidence at dadmi we are running multiple courses the first course is the mentorship camp test series program so in this program we are providing you three phased answer writing out of which you get two questions daily for 6 month plus you practice 10 uh, mini test or half length test subject wise test right and then full four mocks the duration of two questions daily will be 6 month 10 min 10 mini test for two month and then this is in the last one month so total nine month of duration and the validity the validity of the program is will be till 2024 to sorry 2023 okay you will get the questions the modal answers 
and the discussions so in the discussions i will discuss how to increase the value in your answers how to increase the marks and the very one very good thing which my students tell me is the discipline that they get a schedule and they get a discipline which is never possible otherwise we will give you a excel sheet in the excel sheet you will get daily target and you have to follow those target and accordingly you have to do the answer writing on it those two targets okay this is the first mentorship program apart from this we have uh, as you can see this is the mentorship program okay details of the mentorship program we cover both paper 1 and paper 2 three months are given to one paper and as per the importance in the exam only we are giving the time for every paper we will do the pyq analysis and value added material that is separate material okay some content we will give here but not the complete content so if you are some someone who who want to get the hand holding who have already completed the syllabus but now uh, want to practice or someone who is uh, struggling in the answer writing or you are a fresher and you want to do the syllabus yourself then you can join this program so in this program we will give you daily schedule with the micro topic list okay and uh, this target will be customized based upon your requirement previous questions will be covered so that you practice those questions again and again there will be weekly mentoring sessions basically ha bataiye there will be weekly mentoring sessions okay and personal tracking sheet will be given three month one paper exam oriented questions and you will be having the flexibility to write the answers as per your timing this is available online or offline in delhi and kolkata right apart from this we are also coming up okay apart from this uh, you get uh, subject wise sessions like we are having this session and uh, topic wise test also after the completion of the particular syllabus and detailed copy evaluation right uh, there are three phases phase 1 daily phase 2 subject wise phase 3 full length mock okay and uh, the new batch is starting from the coming monday you can join then coming to the enriched study material so in the study material of commerce and accountancy optional is very very saturated kind of not very value added content or new content is available so we are trying to bring very good content which include the previous question marking good quotations especially in the paper 2 examples corporate case studies micro diagrams and definition by the thinker the printed hard copy will be available by the end of this month in a very very good manner you can check the samples and you can order the copies right then we have the classroom program in the classroom program 6 month duration five classes will be happening starting in the third week of september you can join this program and paper 1 paper 2 will be covered fully one weekly test will be given you will get study material also complete 100% syllabus will be done three phase mentorship will be part of this program and test is also included in this program the cost of this program will be 40000 uh, 60000 for both paper and paper 2 combined so this